and we're live. So we kind of glossed over it earlier, but yeah, yeah, you're getting the flamethrower. What are you going to do with the flamethrower first? Start fires in the fire pit. I think Ex that'd be fun. Mm -hmm. I, 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 I um, the the new ones are actually better. That so so they they upgraded them again. The XM42s and shocks Skype. The, like I don't know, like like a standard spray bottle. It was it was like that that screwed on there of camping fuel, and now it's one of those really small, uh, almost like a cylinder, uh, pr uh, propane butane canisters that goes on there. Uh, it's twenty five feet uh, of distance, and the flame is a lot wider now. It's it's works real nice. I have a thousand gallon propane tank because that's what we use for the house. I wonder how hard it would be to turn that into a refill station for the flamethrower. They're like three bucks a pop, and they last a long time. You should. You really, don't, 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 don't risk this. This is how you die. This is, this is like how you, this, you're going to be a goner because you, you were too cheap to buy $3 worth of propane. Like, just fuck, I'm going to send you two canisters. Don't try to refill anything. I just feel like that. Could, I used to think that they make. I can um, see you tapping into this 500 gallon tank thousand. to fill up this 3.7 ounce cube of butane. <laughs> <laughs> and okay. it's just filling the air with vapors. And, yeah, no, right. Just, it just, uh... just buy a bottle. Yeah, <laughs> they're two dollars and forty-seven cents a piece. This is just, but uh, but yeah, I, I played with those things the other day. We uh, we shot up our, we did the firework woman, uh, we did the thermite car. It melted the engine block. I I was pretty fat. I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and I put uh, um, thermite on top of the car, and I threw propane tanks all inside the car. So the, the thermite's melting the, the propane bottles, and they're exploding. And I didn't consider this, but they're exploding and sending thermite flying through the air. So it's kind of raining thermite. So we're kind of running from the action w with a flamethrower strapped to me. And I'm talking <laughs> to the camera like, I'm really lucky I've got a cameraman who doesn't mind when thermite rains from the sky. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to, like, desperately hold the Russian accent together? Oh, yeah, talking? yeah, because like, it's... Oh, sometimes it, things do not go according to plan. Like, <laughs> exactly <laughs> like that. You'll see. That's, that, that'll that be in the video. It's it's me kind of... Like, I, 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 I light all the thermite up. I get it going. You know, I'm using the, ther the flamethrower to light magnesium strips and sparklers that initiate the thermite reaction because it's got to be that hot. You know, a flame won't do it. Um, and then it starts, and there's liquid metal flying and dripping and pouring, and it's getting pretty violent. So you can't and, just light uh, tannerite on fire? Uh-uh, not tan. This is thermite, though. This is So thermite is three parts... Um, um, it's iron. rust. What is uh, Iron oxide. It's three parts iron oxide, one part aluminum powder mixed together, and when you initiate same the element. reaction... Periodic table. Iron, aluminum, same thing. <laughs> All right, wings. <laughs> I shouldn't have this isn't aluminized steel we're talking about. This is no mag light flashlight. This is thermite. <laughs> so you put I put the stuff in flower pots because flower pots are ceramic. You know, like the space shuttle. Kind of ceramics doesn't matter how hot they get. They they don't melt. I guess eventually they melt, but not at five thousand degrees, which is what thermite burns at. So it drips through the car, melts the engine block, hits those propane tanks. They're exploding, going everywhere. And uh, we just kind of try to get some distance between us and it. But the firework woman, I put four hundred, roughly four or five hundred dollars worth of fireworks, and attached them to a female mannequin. And big fireworks, mortars and bottle rockets and Roman candles, which are all pointed back at me. Um, and about six thousand like long strings of firecrackers that I like braided and made a dress for her. Um, and I shot it with a flamethrower at pretty much point blank range, and I put one of those face shields on um, to make sure I didn't I didn't lose any in, any Thank of the money God. making here. Yeah. But um, but <laughs> I, I took one. To, I hope it's on uh, on video. We shot it in high speed from a from a side angle, but I definitely got hit a couple times, and it really fucking hurt. Um, <laughs> with shit, like a Roman candle, a Roman candle or a bottle rocket. I don't know which. There is shit flying everywhere. It's I mean it's a real shit show, and I got a flamethrower in each hand, like doing crazy arms with them. So we had a real good time. Um, yeah, the pictures you sent look. That's going to be an awesome video. Yeah, we had a good time. We, yeah, yeah, I did not. Had a, I did have the Ghostbuster suit on. Yeah, I've got the Ghostbuster suit on the whole time. What's I don't the, think I make any reference to it either. Safety first. <laughs> What's the ETA on that video? Uh, end of the week, I guess. So you think it's it'll be April? No, he'll, he should have it done in two Wait. or three days. I forgot it was Man, March. March. I forgot it was yes. March for a second there. So uh, you think it'll be March? Yeah, I've got um, I've got two done. I've got the shotgun video already filmed and ready to upload, and I've got uh, 
I'll have that flamethrower video in two days. And then that other thing that I don't want to talk about should happen soon. And uh, and then we'll do some other things. The shotgun video, is that the one with the very expensive shotgun? Did that happen? No, um, we use these. These are the double barrel shotguns. I follow. No, I, I Those are also you... very expensive. Yes, but there's... Uh... He, he was I don't know whatever happened to the shotgun guy. He kept someone. putting that off more and more, and I don't think she's just. I just think she hasn't contacted him in a while. Yeah. He kept extending his European sales to something. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I, I'll say it because I don't think it's too much of a secret. Uh, he was working with someone who made a hundred thousand dollars shotguns. Well, he doesn't make them. He's he's like the. They sell them. He sells like four, like three or four different brands, and I guess. It's the brand of shotguns that the royal family of England use, and I, I, they're really fancy <laughs> shotguns. They, they, I'm not exaggerating; they literally are. Um, and they're, Chiz wrote it there. They're like over one hundred thousand dollars shotguns, and so our idea was to get some of those and do a video, and we sp- probably still will eventually. Some sometimes there's, it'll it takes years to finally hook up with people to get an idea going. There's a YouTube video that shows the making of one of them, and yeah. Th- so I. <laughs> Can you explain what make like what in there blew you away to the point that you're like, okay, I see why that's a hundred thousand. So a couple of things. Um, sometimes the, the the materials they use are fantastic materials. They'll use like petrified. Uh, the the stock will be made from petrified wood from some like inundated forest somewhere, and it'll it'll look like stone, but it's wood. It'll be so beautiful. Um, but they do a lot of hand engraving. Um, on not just on the wood, but on the on the metal, on the on the on the on the breech, uh, uh, on the steel of the gun. They're hand engraved. It's incredibly intricate can, and beautiful. They use yeah. There's aspects of it. And I've watched these videos several times. I feel like I know everything. Um, they're building these things. The people that are doing it, it's a lost art. Like hand engraving metal, like carving metal to be engraved in a way like that like i just feel like there's not a lot of people on the earth who have this skill set um they make screws right like if if i was building a shotgun i think i would buy screws they're kind of standardized you do whatever but because they make their own screws the like um the slot in the screw is aligned like perfectly either perpendicular or parallel to what you want it to be aligned with like Everything about it isn't it. Oh, and then afterwards they like file the screw so the screw is like you know, it, totally it, flush with the wood, like thank all smooth. You. That's what I was looking for. Um, that there is no detail too small to get perfect, and uh, and I guess for a hundred thousand dollars, that's what you'd want. So are they like old timey looking shotguns, like over unders or double yes. barrels for the most part? Yeah, they're over unders and side by sides. Yeah, they're really beautiful. They'll have like gold leaf stuff and all kinds of intricate designs. Um, I bought my dad a uh, a Colt 1911, um, not about three Christmases ago, and it's got a lot of like um, engraving on it and stuff. And we were we were shooting that thing the other day, and it really is beautiful. Everybody was everybody was wanting to take a look at it. I, I like stuff that's engraved. Um, I, uh, I want to buy a, co- a gun that is a limited edition something like. Like, I don't know, the next time, like, I, I missed 1976, where I'm sure there were a lot of, like, 200-year anniversary guns, but something needs to come along where I can get, like, a, a special gun, you know, and it's... A few years until the end of World War One, 100-year anniversary, maybe there'll be something there. Cool trench gun. Something like that. That's I don't know. actually cool. Someone should that do that. That would be cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's neat. Yeah, like, m- one of my buddies, actually, he wanted to get a gun for home defense and he bought a trench gun as his home defense gun and he also keeps it in a bug out bag because he's like super paranoid about shit going down and he wants to be prepared but yeah that thing is awesome you can just feel the germans that died by it (laughs) (laughs) i've seen um those luger the world war ii german luger pistols with um like uh, you could, where blood had been splattered on it, it's corroded. You can see the blood stains on there, and I, I'm definitely most of the time they they'll um, I don't know what the word they use, but they'll grind off the swastika and the eagle. But I every think now that's and then, yeah, well, the you got to think like you just had beat the Nazis. They weren't thinking that it was something to hang on to. They were oh, just kind of okay. yeah, yeah. I thought so, it was a PC you know, thing. At first. No, modern collectors look would much for, would much rather have the one that hasn't that, been that makes uh, sense. Defaced. Okay. defaced. Yeah. I wish I had like 
the I don't want like flags or any of that stuff, but the the guns in particular I think would be really neat to own. Like I'd love a Luger. I, I actually almost anything at any side weapons that have been in war are interesting to me. Those are really cool. There's a whole story to it. You don't know all the places it's been. Yeah, I but, I, I, I imagine uh, you know, somebody really terrified or brave or either one is fine with me, uh, you know, being under fire, counting on that thing with his life. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting. Someone at some point in time experienced a lot of turmoil or exhilaration or something holding that that you're now holding. And that's a cool feeling, you know? Yeah. It's I, very I, neat. I have Do one you know one. that World War One, uh, the Germans wanted to get rid of the trench gun? Because the American, it was so effective in trenches <clears throat> that if they were like running through, clearing the trench, they could just whip around the corner and fire. And suddenly, you got a brutally maimed German who a bunch of people have to drag back to their side. Like, did you know about that? Yeah, that they, they tried. They wanted them uh, sort of outlawed as uh, you know, cruel yeah. weapons. And you got to keep in mind this is during a time where where gas weapons were were very prevalent, especially with the Germans. You know, using chlorine gas, mustard gas. Yeah, and they don't want us to use a shotgun. But they'll just gas you. That's ridiculous. Shock. And uh, it was also this may be some bunk horseshit, but I read it and I choose to believe it because it's cool. That when they would throw the Germans would throw grenades, some of the like really good uh, skeet shooters who had like trench guns could like shoot the grenade and hit it in midair, like you're shooting the skeet, and just kind of knock the trajectory off and make it so that it wasn't going to hit you. Totally. Which sounds maybe unbelievable, but that would be so cool. I'll to prove just be it. Like, I, I'll do that next week. It's just not a problem. That's so. Do you easy think to they do. had like a go-to guy as they're saying like Billy Joe? Uh, I would be man. your guy. <laughs> I would Real be your guy. Shit. That's that's what we do. I, I sit around and um, we we use shotgun like spent shotgun shells a lot as targets. I, I mean, it's nothing to throw two up and pop two, but I'll usually have someone throwing them for me and try to keep re- keep the gun reloaded. Um, but but yeah, that would be easy to to How shoot do you a grenade. Do with I believe spent shotgun the co- shells they're so light. You just flick them just right. You can throw them really far. End over end. I Never believe tried. that Kyle could hit a grenade. Sorry if I'm getting quiet. But I'm not certain that it would change the um, the trajectory of it. Because like, grenades are pretty heavy, right? Mm-hmm. But, yeah. It would depend what, what kind of... Is that it it depends on the shotgun gun. and the load. I, I don't know. I, I would guess that they're, they're, they got buckshot. If they got a full chuck with buckshot, I feel like I could totally divert the path of a grenade as long as it was within 20 yards. You know I'm what, Kyle? I'm also thinking that it's not one dude who's the designated grenade shooter. There's probably 50 dudes in that trench with a trench gun, and they see a grenade flying up, and all of them are firing at it. You know, like, I just, it's I'm probably going to get hit by more than one. Thinking out load. loud, Kyle, you could probably do a video that's not as high effort as a typical FPS Russia video for your second channel, just as a Mythbusters on that. Like, hey, you know, the uh, people pitch me ideas and I always hate them. But, I shit, my volume. I, uh, I'd i be super interested if you could just, like, prove or disprove that you can alter We're losing course. you, Woody. Sorry about that. We we totally lost you right there. Try again. I'm, I'm very upset. There you go. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, it, it, anyway, it... Is a second channel video, I bet just a prove or disprove whether or not you could knock a grenade off course would be interesting. I like that idea. Um, I I, I want to make some real grenades. So I think we should do it with real grenades, but not a live one. You know, I, I think there should be real grenades involved with the video. I think part of the, the funny part should be that first we throw a real grenade and it like blows up and it's devastating and then we're like now we're going to see if we can do this whole world war ii thing where they diverted grenades you ready you ready sergey like sergey's over there waving it's jeremy <laughs> and he throws the other grenade at me and i, and I try to shoot it. so yeah that no, would be but when you do the the dry run through of it don't have him lob it like they would have him like pitch it just line drive straight at you so you're firing just <laughs> like oh that. god right at him Oh, I yeah, did do that. Th- I did that thing once where I had a pitching machine throw throwing. Overhand, yeah. I had a I had a pitching machine throwing <laughs> baseballs at me, and I was shooting them. That was pretty interesting. 